David Ricardo, one of the most influential economic thinkers who ever lived. He achieved so much in his short life. David Ricardo was a very complicated man, but he was a very complicated thinker as well. David Ricardo was born on April 19, 1772 in London to a Jewish family who immigrated from the Netherlands all the way to England. Ricardo's father, who happened to be a successful stockbroker, made a fortune on the London Stock Exchange. David Ricardo was third of 17 children. Someone should have used birth control. Ah, ah, ah. When Ricardo was 14, he joined his father's business and showed talent in economics. Life was good for the family until 1793 when he married a Quaker named Priscilla Ann Wilkinson. Ricardo had forsaken his Jewish religion to become a Unitarian. His parents disowned him and he never spoke to them again. Even though he was on his own, he made connections in the stock market from working with his father. He kept working at the stock exchange and slowly made his own fortune. The year 1799 was an important one for David Ricardo. It was then that he first read Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations. At first, economics was something he studied in his spare time. But as his dedication grew, so did his focus. Ten years later, he finally published his first article on economics. In it, he talked about how the Bank of England caused inflation at the time by printing too much money. This bullying controversy caused reform in the bank and forced them to limit the amount of money. The Battle of Waterloo made David Ricardo a millionaire almost overnight. Ricardo lived during the French Revolution and played a huge economic role involving the Battle of Waterloo. The battle itself was intense and the outcome uncertain. Meanwhile, David was fighting for a loan contract with the British government. Once he got it, everything was in the hands of faith. The bonds were worth very little, and there were two outcomes. Napoleon and France win the battle and the value of the bonds plummet. But if Britain wins, David Ricardo and his newly acquired bonds skyrocket. Well, guess what? David Ricardo became extremely rich. In today's world, he would have earned $52 million from these bonds alone. He was set for life, living in luxury like a baller. Today, David Ricardo is mostly remembered for one thing especially, comparative advantage. Just how important is comparative advantage? Well, even in today's global economy, it's still used. Now to answer the other question, what is it? Comparative advantage tries to solve the problems of opportunity cost. For example, Portugal can sell three units of apples for every one unit of wine. But England can sell three units of wine for two units of apples. Portugal can export apples more easily, while England has an easier time exporting wine. Both countries should produce what they make better in excess, and then trade them with each other to save costs and labor. Everyone benefits from trade. September 11, 1823. A sad day in history as David Ricardo dies due to an ear disease.